Max Kellerman, NBA, always yes. forward thinking. Do you like, love, or hate the NBA associated with gambling? I actually love it. I think this is Adam, Sil Adam Silver's being smart here, guys. Look, remember the movie Casino, Stephen A., with, uh, with De Niro and Pesci? Mm -hmm. And Robert De Niro played Ace Rothstein. That's based on a guy named Frank Rosenthal by most accounts. Frank Rosenthal is a guy who in Vegas said, all these bookies outside the casino, the casino, why are we losing this money to them? Let's bring the book inside the casino. Therefore, you have a sports book. Now, is, is gambling potentially a problem for sports leagues because of a corrupting influence? Sure. Is it considered unsavory by some and may marginalize the perception of sports as wholesome to some? It, it could happen, sure. There's that danger. But the greater danger is not controlling it. It's like alcohol prohibition, right? The temperance movement. We don't like alcohol and the effects on society. Let's make it illegal. Well, now you're dealing with a whole new set of problems, including corruption and the violence around it, et cetera. And you still have the problem of alcohol consumption because people are still going to drink. People are still going to gamble. Um, and the only difference now is they don't control it and they don't profit from it. What With daily sports, Stephen A., daily fantasy sports, the idea, the argument they made, well, we're not really gambling. Yes, you are. Of course you are. They're already in the gambling business. And so, and so to take the vigorish, as it's called, the vig, of 1% of that money, which is an enormous economy, makes a lot of financial sense. And it also makes sense from the standpoint that, yes, it's a vice, but you can control it if you regulate it. And if you don't, you can't. Well, let me say this. <clears throat> the NBA has every right to do what it's trying to do. Um, I definitely do not disagree. I do not disagree with Adam Silver and the NBA and what they want to do. Their 1% cut, they absolutely should get it. I mean, listen, it's your product, and people are making money off of your product. Why shouldn't you find a way to do the same? I totally understand that, Max, and I agree with that assessment. But I don't think we have to like it. Because what we need to do is take into account what transpired in 1992. What was it? The Professional and Amateur was the Professional and Amateur Sports Protection Act of 1992, which basically put a federal ban on gambling. Let's understand for a second why there was a federal ban that's in existence. It's not just about the leagues itself. It's not just about the potentiality of, of, of point shaving and things of that nature. Remember, it's not just referees that you need to be concerned about, a la Tim Donaghy from, from, from years ago and all of that other stuff. It's not just them. It's also players. You know, you could take Pete Rose into account and talk about how he bet on himself winning, not losing. Well, you know what? You could do that, too. That's still manipulating things to some way. But let's also take it to account, Max, the society that we're living in, which is already ultra invasive due to social media and beyond. These are with people that have interest, obviously. They have an interest in the sport. Some of them gamble, and we get all of that. But you're talking about all of this proliferating to the point where it can become even more alarming than it already is because now that it's going to, you know, you're on the verge of getting it legalized, you're assuming that it's going to provoke more participation. Well, if there's more participation and there's more interest, there's also more vitriol, there's also more invasiveness, there's also a whole bunch of other things that really could affect the performance of the product that's being put out there for us to actually bet on. So, again, I understand the leagues uh, like the NBA doing what it's doing. I understand them wanting their 1% cut. I applaud them for really endorsing and trying to provoke federal intervention where it becomes a federal law that it's legalized and that way you can work your way around it to make sure that the restrictions are in place and all the stipulations are in place to monitor things so you don't have to worry but so much. But in the end, it's inevitable what the rippling effect of all of this may be well, because the consumer in, out there is somebody you can't police quite as easily as you can fact, police those representing your product and it can become problematic.